happen, man. <laughs> and y'all was like, y'all be, but y'all act like ESPN control the whole structure of things, bro. The best going, you gotta win, man. You gotta finish, bro. And that's been that's been basketball for my whole life, to be that honest with you. So, you already know what it is, man. Man, pretty much, this is the Primetime Angles Live on IG. And this is um, kind of a um, different type of episode today, uh, pretty much because we only got baseball. So, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of get into my reporter bag a little bit you know what I mean my so and break down my thoughts on the playoffs as we see it right now and things of that nature so pretty much you know let's talk about the first game of the day yesterday we got the over 208 there in the heat um Celtics game but let me tell you right now that heat Celtic series is about to be epic dog I'm telling you right now, Jimmy Butler, Jason Tatum, they really about to get it on. And shout out to my dog, because he called it first. He was in this room when he said it, too. He said, Heat Celtics uh, game one. I damn near laughed at him, and I said, I don't know if that's going to happen. And it happened. So, you know what? I think we all we all got blessed, to be that honest with you, because I think we all really did want the Celtics Heat Eastern Conference Finals. This is much better on TV then then it would have been with the Raptors and the Bucks it would have been all boring again you know what I mean because come on my, Boston is Boston Boston got the rings and Miami is Miami Miami is like Lakers South bro seriously they're like LA South so you know they they got they got a great great GM great president in Pat Riley and then you got the Celtics you know they got their thing going on as well too and um they, you know, the Celtics tradition, all that good stuff. So pretty much, man, that to me was the biggest reason why they were able to get that big win yesterday. As you guys can see, Bam put the block of a lifetime on Jason Tatum yesterday. And this is just what happens in really, really good basketball games. We're going to have moments like this, and this series is about to be epic. I wouldn't say count Boston out right now. Boston is ballooned back up to a plus 550 to win the championship, while we have the Heat going to plus 425. The Lakers right now are minus 210. The Nuggets are plus 850. So pretty much, this is what they're saying right now. The Lakers are cakewalking to the uh, finals. But the way this bubble life is working right now, ain't nobody cakewalking to nothing. Because this is just like the NCAA tournament. And the Clippers got beat like a team in the NCAA tournament. Like, say, if they were up 20 points going into this se second half and they just blew the game. And they didn't blow the game. They, like, really, really blew the game. 16-point lead game six. I mean, game five. 16-point lead game six. 13-point lead game seven, and they shot out the cannon and had a 7-0 run to start the third quarter, and they still got and they still got beat by double digits. They got beat by double digits twice after being up double digits. That's more embarrassing than losing the series, dude. You literally had these guys on the wall, but you played against a team that doesn't quit, and you kept taking your foot off the gas, letting them come back. And when I saw Lou Will miss that late uh, layup, in the game in the fourth quarter last night, I said, it's over. It's over. Something's wrong. It's something's wrong. Man, something is it's over with. Their confidence is gone. And it seemed like their confidence kept getting shook, man. Seriously. But literally, you know, yeah, let me just stay on it. Nuggets Clippers, man, because we know we, we got we'll talk more about the Heat and Celtics tomorrow when we break down the bets and things like that. But just for, you know, pretty much for Clipper fans, man, I'm telling you right now, you guys got to understand that you have a good team, but you have to learn how to build something. You have to build chemistry and you can't be shifting parts every six months. You know, the Clippers have no rapport. They got a lot of talent, but they don't have rapport. There's nobody there that can say, I've been there for the last 10 years or five, six years. Everybody they've had, they pretty much recycled through the last three years. This, to me, is a, I feel is a big, big, big swipe at Blake Griffin, of all people. Blake Griffin always needed a guy like Kawhi, and Kawhi needed a guy like Blake Griffin in this playoff situation. And if they, he would have been able to have somebody like that, 
This could have pushed the Clippers over the top to get to the Western Conference Finals. But you all, we all know Blake Griffin was traded for Tobias Harris, of all people. And they kind of threw him away as if he wasn't Mr. Clipper. And I said that all Mr. Clipper needed was a star like Kawhi. And Kawhi would have came and played with Blake Griffin. So pretty much the Clippers have been just making bad decisions, period. And I think the day that they really let Blake Griffin go, they were saying to themselves that, okay, we got this new thing that we're going to start and we're going to start fresh. And that really means that you you get your superstar and it took about two years. So now they're about to start fresh. I'm going to tell you like this. The Clippers are about to get rid of half the roster right now. Those guys cannot be Kawhi's teammates because they don't go hard enough. The reason why he won with the Raptors was because the Raptors didn't mind sacrificing. The Raptors had guys who could step up and hit a shot when they're open. It's a big difference. And they really, really played off of each other very well, man. So that's why it was such a success in Toronto for Kawhi. Because Kawhi and him were the perfect fit. He's a low-key guy. They're a low-key team. So why not? You know, Spurs, low-key team, great chemistry, and boom, champions. L.A., distractions. The moment he got here, his sister killed somebody in a casino. Come on, dog. And they going back to Kawhi like he set it up or something. No, this is just, you know, pretty much he's a guy, great player, man. But the thing is, though, he's going to need more. And I know people were like, why are you bailing him out? Well, because he carried these guys throughout the whole series, and they had to step it up for him at some point. When the Lakers won their last championship, if you are if you watch the game, Kobe had one of his worst games ever, and he was looking trash throughout the whole game. You know who stepped up for him? Ron Artest, of all people. And Ron Artest led the way and led us to the championship that night. Kobe got all the credit, but still, we had... Ron or Test there to lead us to the championship. They didn't have that last night. They didn't couldn't rely on Marcus Morris to help them out to get the 24, 30 points that they needed. The extras. They didn't get Lou Williams to get the extras last night. Trez over there with his little six points and his little two layups and a uh, couple missed free throws. That ain't gonna do nothing. And then he doesn't even play the players that would be able to contribute, like Terrence Mann. And my boy, um, I'm thinking of him right now. I can't think of his his whole name right now because he got a long-ass name. But number four on the Clippers. And, you know, he's another guy who contributes big time. Zubak was in foul trouble last night. They were scared to play him. So pretty much the Clippers need way more than just, you know, names. The Clippers need chemistry. They need cooperation and they need players that are going to go that extra mile to win games they literally were quitting the thing was is that you got the the Denver Nuggets who played 14 playoff games they should be gassed tired whatever because they got they had to really work in this series and you still let them off the hook that's the problem and you let them off the hook because you Read your press clippings, and you thought that they was going to let you walk into the finals without a challenge. The Lakers had to smash on the Rockets for it to be a done deal. Y'all didn't do the same. Y'all didn't smash on the Nuggets. You didn't make them quit. So it is what it is. Congratulations to the Nuggets because they are a team that play that never stops playing. And that's why I had to go ahead and say, the Clippers won't do anything. For, I won't do anything with the Clippers until they can show me that they can get, get past the second round. They were even at their third win, and it looked like it was a cakewalk to win game five. I still didn't want to do it. Game six, still didn't want to do it. In game seven, I definitely didn't want to do it because I just know that this team wasn't ready to be a champion. And it's that simple. And if they would have got to the Lakers, the Lakers would have beat them in six. And that's real. That's real. Okay? So pretty much it is what it is, and that's my two cents on the NBA playoffs right there. Tabernacle, all right? So let's go ahead, talk about some baseball. Let's get to the money, dog. All right, so 
Here we are. We got the MLB primetime pick six today, and it's a short one, 29-1. I know 29-1 is still a big number, but, you know, our numbers be way bigger than this, though. And it's a six-team uh, or two. You want it to be, uh, like, at least 40-1, to one, but we'll take 29-1 because this could be a winner right here because it looks because I'm going with the high money lines today, so it is what it is. So we start off uh, first game. We got the over nine with the Red Sox and the Marlins yesterday. The uh, Red Sox did get us the shutout yesterday. MLB dog of the day. And um, they did get us the 2-0 uh, shutout against the Marlins yesterday. Today, they scored some runs. We got the over nine. Let's go ahead and cash that ticket. I feel good about that one because both these pitchers can get hit and they can get hit really hard. And both these teams, you know, they know how to tune up the offenses a little bit, but we'll see how it goes. And then we got a big, big favorite in the Reds today. But you know what, though? Luis Castillo is kind of shaky to me, even though he's a better pitcher at home and everything like that. Uh, you might might want to take them, uh, you know, on the, the one and a half, the run line or something like that today. But I think that what they do is they, they wind up going under in this game. Um, just because Louis Castillo probably will have a really good uh, day against the Pirates. And Brubaker should hold hold his own. And that's why I'm saying let's go ahead and take the under eight and a half. Let's see how it shakes out. Then we move on. We got the Tigers. The Tigers. The Tigers are going against the Royals today. And um, I do like the Tigers here. And the Tigers are a good money line play as well, too. But I, I'm going to go with the insurance play with the plus one and a half with them today. I think that it's going to be a close game. So, Let's go ahead and take that bet right there. Plus one and a half on the Tigers and the Yankees. The Yankees. They got themselves a good matchup today. But they got Garrett Cole on the mound. And it's time for the Yankees to heat up, man. After scoring 18 runs last night, I think that the Yankees are due to keep scoring and scoring and scoring some more. So I'm taking the Yankees again with the minus one and a half today. I think that they blow away the uh, Blue Jays once again because they know what they got to do moving forward to get to the goal. You know what I mean? So the Yankees, you already know. You guys start winning man because the Rays are like running away with the uh, division so pretty much I got the Yankees minus one and a half let's see how that will shake out and then we have the Mets it's Jacob DeGrom day and you know what they're going against the Phillies they're on the road the Phillies are having a pitching change today as well too they got Arietta on the mound instead of Noya from what I was looking at earlier and so pretty much what I'm going to do here is I feel like Jacob DeGram, he's been getting us some good wins lately, but I don't want to risk anything with the minus one and a half on the Mets because they're a road team today. So I'm going to go ahead and spend a little, we'll spend a little extra here and do and pay with the minus 175. When you get a minus 175 on a Cy Young pitcher, you, you can grab it. It's the, it, I know it costs more, but you know, it's better than a minus 250. It's better than a minus 300. Minus that 175. Yeah, you're giving it up an extra 75, but it's cool, man. It's cool. The ticket cash is the ticket cash. Is, it is what it is. So pretty much there it is. I got the uh, Mets money line minus 175. And then we got the Indians money line minus 120. And let's see how it shakes out with that. The Indians let us down yesterday because you know what? We had the... Dog pick four pretty much locked down. They locked the tied the game up five five. Yeah, it's Wheeler on the mound. I'm so sorry about that, bro. It was Wheeler on the mound, but it was supposed to be Noya today. It was supposed to be Noya, but Zach Wheeler used to play play for the Mets, so I know that this is going to be a, a tough one. But Eric, thank you for uh, correcting that for me, bro. Um, Pretty much, um, we got the Indians minus 120. They were the ones that blew the dog pick four yesterday. We had the ticket, and we was going to cash that bad boy. We got the Rockies home yesterday. We got the Red Sox home yesterday. And we got the Brewers to blow out the Cardinals yesterday. And then all we needed was the Indians to win and extras, and they still lost in a game they needed to win. So it is what it is, man. So pretty much we'll try to get that bad boy today, but we did come very close. So if you tell them you got three out of four, that's 75% last night, your bankroll should be looking nice, looking real nice. You already know what it is. And um, we did good yesterday, though. We did very, very well yesterday in baseball. And you know we did what we did in the NBA last night. So, hey. You know, everybody's smiling, smiling this morning. I already know. That's what my job is to do. Get y'all smiling, looking at them bank accounts with that money building and building. That's what it's all about. You know, none of that game of the day, game of the year, any of that. We just cash tickets. It's what it's all about. 
All right, so MLB dog pick for 40 to 1. We got the cards in game one today. I got the plus 135 on the cards. Game one, and then we got the Twins today. The Twins coming in as a good dog today, and I feel like, you know, the White Sox is feeling themselves, and today's the day to get popped. So let's go ahead, Twins, plus 130. Let's see how it shakes out. We got the Rangers in the uh, – Astros today that in the rivalry rivalry game and then we're gonna go with the plus 190 and then um for the dog of the day it's gonna be at the end of the night we're gonna go with the Diamondbacks because you know Diamondbacks Angels they're literally the same team and once again the Angels ain't got no business being no minus 180s and things of that nature they ain't got no business being a big favorite they're not a big favorite team you know, their number when they're a favorite needs to be minus 130 or minus 140, minus 120. No, I don't. They they too chalky to win the day. Diamondbacks, big dog. Circle it. Dog of the day, Diamondbacks. And also, just for people who are interested in being a client but they still on the fence, just note, we've hit the premium the last seven days in a row. And actually, we hit it the last nine out of ten days as well, too. So, I don't know. You might want to get on that wave a little bit because I got a couple of my clients in here right now, and they are very happy. And they let me know that on a daily basis. So, pretty much, if you do want to get in, you guys holler at me, man. PTSI on IG, or you guys can go ahead and hit me um, on the Twitter, at PopDiBiase. But please be serious. Don't be that person hitting me up looking for a book and all that other stuff because I'm not here to I give you guys books it's my bookie and Bavada's and all that stuff there's plenty of books out there get on the internet you know what I mean and stop looking for local bookies because they don't want to deal with nobody that they ain't never met so pretty much that's the thing and um you know Come holler at me if you're serious about moving forward, building bankroll, and we'll get you right. We'll get you uh, to where you need to go, okay? So uh, pretty much um, that is going to be a wrap for the MLB today. And we got a good racetrack. Y'all might want to pay attention to this. I'm going to talk about Kentucky Downs. The, I'm going to tell you like this. This track is so good, they all, can only run two weeks out the year. And it's so good because they have some of the biggest purses in all the horse racing. The minimum minimum purse is ninety thousand dollars, okay. So these are big time racehorses running. So that means that big time odds get hit as well too. So let's go ahead and talk about Kentucky Downs. And yes, Kentucky Downs. We're gonna go with the first timer by the name of McCannyville. Um, with the win place show here, 98 furlong, uh, made in special weight. And um, this is going to be a very, very good race. And so pretty much what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and circle McCannyville. It is the horse's first time out. And this is a son of California, Chrome the Kentucky Derby winner from about five, six years ago. So pretty much this is a good, good bet because it's, a, it's the horse's first time and his daddy could run on turf as well too. His dad ran on turf one time and won. And it was the Hollywood Turf Club, so that's a hell of a that's a hell of a uh, accomplishment for somebody as well too. And so, pretty much there it is. We got the key horse number one, McCannyville Win Play Show one seven five three. That's going to be our group for that race. So you guys can box it up one three five seven, or you guys can key it one three five seven. Now you guys, we got the Franklin Simpson Stakes, which is half a million dollars, six and a half furlongs, and all these races are on the turf as well too. That's what makes it very exciting we're gonna go with uh the home team you already know what it is the doug o'neill trained four left number 11 this horse i like this horse a lot i know this horse very well and doug doesn't put these horses in the spot unless he knows they can go out there and compete and possibly win so i'm gonna roll with that right there give me number 11 four left and we're gonna put these we're gonna pair him up with the seven one and the three you guys can box it one three seven eleven key it eleven one three seven now we move on to the final race and that's gonna be um the nightcap it's a 45 Five thousand dollar race and it is a long race as well too 12 furlongs is pretty long dude um so pretty much it's like a mile and three quarters so pretty much what we're doing here is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put the um five seven one four nine together we do have the super high five here so you can box it one four five seven nine and hopefully we can get a big big number home on this and go from there man and um I feel good about it. I feel good. I feel great. And then we got the 50 cent, the 50 center, 
late pick four races seven through ten and um we're gonna go all bet in the first race and then we're gonna go into leg two two four six nine and then in leg three we're gonna go one three seven eleven and then in leg four we're gonna single the five our horse take charge dioro uh me mcdalia dioro um baby so you know i always trust those horses if you got the dioro at the end of your name you can run all right, so pretty much it is what it is, and there it is. That is our Kentucky Downs bets of the day with the late pick four. I'll be tweeting out the card all day long for you guys because this rate these races start actually at 10.15. So I will be tweeting this out for you guys, so you guys be on the lookout for that. But once again, I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in today. Tomorrow we'll have... NBA back. We'll have the NBA back. We'll have WNBA back, I think, as well, too. And then we'll also have our MLB. And then we'll be talking um, Golden Gate. Hopefully, they're going to be running on Thursday. And then um, we do have Santa Anita opening up on Saturday. So pretty much you guys be on the lookout as well, too. I plan on doing a horse racing show by itself. So, you know, I don't have to, you know, bore you guys too much because I know y'all my sports fanatics. But thing is though, if you guys are interested, we are gonna I'm gonna be probably start a horse racing show at the end of this year when Santa Anita starts their big meet. So be on the lookout for that. That's gonna be a lot of fun. But all in all though, I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in once again. It is always a pleasure. You guys there is no me without you. We're just keeping the movement growing and growing and growing. You know, every day I see you know more and more more people getting interested more and more people seeing that the results are there so yeah it's good to be transparent so i thank you guys so much you guys have a beautiful day i'll be back to you tomorrow at the same time 9 a.m pacific time and man i'm telling you cash those tickets baby and um this is the premier sports betting show the primetime angles live on ig with the one and only Pop DBIC, the primetime capper, and I am gone. Appreciate you too, RJ. Out.